Welcome back. We have arrived at episode 7 of Avatar, the live action series, The North. And before I even go into what happens in The North, I, I want to take a moment to talk about what happened at the very beginning of this episode. And, and why, I, why I was really impressed. Because, okay, um, this lieutenant comes and tells Zuko that he overheard um, I, I, um this new... Admiral Zhao, or Zhao, whatever the hell you want to call it, um, getting orders from the Fire Lord stating that Zuko is to be arrested as a traitor and that the Imperial Guard is coming to, um, to arrest him. So they have Zuko escape on this small boat to see if he could um, get away before that happens. As he's going out on the boat now and he uses his fire bending to light the engine, he then realizes that the boat is packed with blasting jelly and then the whole thing blows up you get to realize that it's admiral Zhao who did it and, and, and i'm like okay this is good this is a twist i didn't see this coming you know he's clearly more ruthless and cunning than i thought and maybe he has a bigger plan in mind and, and he was willing to sacrifice zuko i mean of course you know zuko wasn't dead but i was like you know yeah this this is good this is what you Really need to do with this character. Show some initiative and give him some growth or something like that. I was like, okay, this is good. Of course, they had to shit that up when they done in the episode. Yep, I had to piss all over that. So, let's get to what happens now. So, Team Avatar, as they're calling themselves now, arrive in the north, in the um, northern water tribe there. And everybody's excited and yay, welcome, 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 welcome. We were expecting you. How were they, how were they expecting you? Why were they expecting you? Nobody, nobody says anything in regards to that. It's just, yay, we're expecting you. How did you know he was coming? You, you don't, they don't give any explanation about that at all. When they get to the um, not know. Ang tells them that you know the um that he had some vision that the that, that they're going to be on that attack and they need to do this and then the other and he uh, and the um the, the the water tribe leader and thing tells him that um they knew that he was coming because no, that knew coming that that they already knew that the fire nation is coming the scouts have uh, have seen some ships coming that way and all of that okay no problem all right so he's there and then they get to meet um all the different people who are there including princess yui and um once again soccer is staring at her and he keeps thinking to himself he knew her from somewhere and all that and i'm watching her and i'm like yeah, she looks familiar to me too you know i mean she's she's really pretty and all but i know this woman from somewhere i couldn't put my finger on it there but i say okay no problem it's good so we get into the to the gist of it now and um and decides he's going to go and and have a talk with um with Avatar Kuruk, who gets some advice on what to happen on the other side of the other. You know, of course, Ang has to go through the whole whining and that, but you know, I'm the Avatar, I wasn't here, what I'm gonna do when the water tribe and them ask him, um, you know, what is he going to be doing? Maybe he should be leading the attack and he tells him that you know he hasn't learned any other um elements besides wind and uh, and that's why he came here and you could tell that they disappointed him. all right so we so he goes into the um to the, to the temple and meditates and, and and talks to the other and i find that whole needing to go to the temple to talk to him is such a dotish thing yeah because i mean it would it worked with it worked with um it worked with the previous avatar roku in the animated series because he had a reason for that but now he had to always it's just really really stupid but whatever we so he goes in let the talk to Kuru. and once again we get another avatar who is just an ass that's the only way to put it you know all this missive and telling him all kind of nonsense but oh oh he saw this vision that means it that means that means that you know it's going to happen he can't change that all he could do is just is just is just change your come and that's about it. And he tells him that you and then you know Ang starts telling him that oh yeah um he can use the elements but um just like what happened with Kiyoshi he could just possess his body and and, and he could help it and he tells him no he can't do that da, 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 da. and here his dumb here's dumb reason for this eh? when he was the avatar 
he realized that some dark spirits wanted to cross over into this world. So he spent the majority of his time fighting them off in the, um, in the spirit realm. And because of that, it did damage to his body so he can enter the avatar state. That makes no sense. Because if you find out that dark spirits want to enter into this realm, there must be a point where there's some weakness in the, in, in, in the veil that separates um, the spirit world from this world. All you would need to do is find it, repair it as the avatar. You could, you could very well do that. And that's it. Why would you spend your, your majority of your life doing that? And he talks about how um, Koro stole his beloved's face because of that. I mean, every time they try to do these things, because you're looking at the trailer and don't understand who they're really making this for. Because even if they're trying to make it for a mature audience, they fail. If you're trying to make it for kids, they fail. If you're trying to make it for, for, for um, people who like the, the animated series, they fail. Because no matter how you do it, when you look back at the animated series, it was more mature than anything this garbage has been putting out. Because these stories make no sense. Every avatar Anne has come across, apart from Roku, who was actually kind of cool, like I said, towards, uh, said towards the end, always has to be a son of a bitch. Oh, Adam, this one is this one is telling you that, that, that you know what you know. Oh, the avatar always has to be alone. Can't depend on his friends. He has to go his path alone. And you're like, freaking wrong with all of you. Look what happened. Look what happened to your lives because you be because you were a bunch of idiots. But regardless of it, whatever. So Katara wants to learn water better. But before I even get to Katara and this nuts, it's it. We go back to um. To Sokka and Princess Yui, right? And you know, it, 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 she's trying to talk with her and stuff, and it's some ice cream, and it's talking that. And then, um, this guy who she was in, you know, let's do this part, yeah? Do this part. She was in betrothed to this guy, the parents, um, arranged But when she turned 16, she decided to break it off, which is her right to do so, right? So women could break off the rights to not marry anybody who they want to, even though, they, even though the marriage has been arranged. That's perfectly fine. But yet they can't fight. Right? That's that that's it. That is supposed to make sense in some way or another. Okay, whatever. So and then we get to find out that the fox the, the, the um this three deal fox thing that that um that sucker met in the spirit realm is actually you way because when she was born she was sick and then your father prayed to the water to the moon spirit or something so and and, and i mean blessed her so now she have like um she's part spirit part human that's why her hair turned white and she's talking that is when i realized exactly who this woman was here she was the lady from the um the, 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 the predator movie and I think it was Prey or something. So when, when, when Predator was from Predator, I think it was fighting some Native American people. That was her. I was like, okay, no, I remember who you are. That's where it clicked on me. And I was like, okay, all right, I get you now. All right, okay, yeah. So, and then she is just telling, um, so, so, so she tells Sucker that, um, you know, the guy that she was um, engaged to was nice and, and perfect, but he's not the guy of a drill. And then she and Sokka start to kiss. There's like no build up for anything when it comes to this thing anymore. I tell you, Sokka is just like the every man. No matter what situation they put him in, he just adjusts to it. You had um Suki from the Kyoshi who was practically eye raping him the moment he showed up. And now he comes in there, meets um Princess Yui for like two minutes and bam, they already they already swapping spit. That's about it. That's really what happens, and, and that's it. So let's get to Katara, right? Katara decides that um, she she goes to see some um, some Jedi, and apparently women only use water bending to heal, not to fight. They they are not allowed to fight. So she goes to see this um, water bending uh, master. Who tells her that you know he's not going to train her women are not allowed to fight that's the way it is okay and once again you get the you get to see how badly they have done katara in this series there is no fire there is no there is no pushiness there is no nothing of what made katara such a great character yes katara had a bit of an attitude and a bit of a thing but 
That's what she was. She was a strong female woman because she wanted to do what she had to do. She knew she was confident. She knew she knew that what challenge so much. She made it always win. But she was brave and bold enough to stand up to it. That's how you make female characters. They can still be female, but still have a little bit of fire to them. This, this new little portrait, Katara, doesn't have that. She doesn't have it at all. Everything she does is just so meek and bland and, 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 and what does. So she, so she's telling Sokka that she's going to challenge this one, this waterbending master. Okay, tell your sister, hey, this is, this is a bad idea. You're going to get yourself beaten here. It's not worth it. You can you can learn so so whatever way you don't need them. No, he just goes along with it and is like, okay, you know, no problem. Kick his ass. Because once again, soccer is just the every man in this. That's it. He's like he's like no situation to put him in anything. And I said, wouldn't it strip him of what made him such a good developing character? This is what they got left behind. It just doesn't work. So Katara decides to go and challenge this water bending master. And this is something that, that, that has been that's been prevalent throughout this show. Eh? Every time somebody uses water, a, a, a water bending attack on somebody, they're never wet after. It's like the water hits them and then they just fry. So Katara does the water whip on him, tries to find and it's like the most boring bending fight ever. Again, as I say, Katara is just too meek to do anything. The, the, the water bed it doesn't even look all that interesting or exciting. She gets partially knocked down and then she's like, gets back up and is like, that all you got? And, and you're like, what? I mean, like, nothing is happening. And then, you know, let's do some flashy moves. He kind of freezes the ice for like, um, skates around her. She throws some, um, some, some, some ice discs at him. He uses some ice spikes to immobilize her, and then bam, that's it. She's lost. And when she's lost, now everybody runs over to her like, "Oh, that's so amazing! How do you know? Um, 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 what? Um, how did you do those ice? This? Uh, that's so impressive. I, I've never seen. I've never seen anybody pushing in master. And I'm like, really? That's how you are a pushing in master? Well, oh, God, uh, all you have to stand that chance when you fire an It's it's really boring. That's the only way to put it. It's like really, really boring. Now, now, if you thought Katara and that nonsense was bad enough, no, then we have to get to um to Azula, who who was fighting these Fire Nation prisoners like rock benders and all kind of stuff because you know Daddy wants because she wants Daddy's approval and Daddy needs to see what she could do. It's such a ridiculous, ridiculous thing. Eh? And then when um. When General, when um General, uh, when um Iroh is talking to this admiral and telling them about what's going on, and said the other, and, and he finds out the fact that you know um, he's been given orders from the Fire Lord to attack the North, and I uh, tell, tells him tells, tells him that you know he has a plan to take this everything and his destiny. Iroh goes and talks to this um to this Fire Nation soldier, and it turns out to be Zuko, and then he tells him that you know um Commander um well, Admiral Zhao is much more cunning than he thought uh, and he figures he figures it was you know is somebody behind him telling him what to do and lo and behold who does that turn out to be Azula. So you've ruined any any kind of growth that this Zhao person possibly could have had just to push this nonsense. Because once again Azula I don't know say it's that terrible idea to bring Azula in. Because you're not giving anybody else a chance to shine and you pretty much destroyed Azula overall. Because what does she do at the end now? She refuses to fight anybody else and then suddenly, suddenly learns how to shoot lightning and, and then Danny's so proud of her and she, she tells him, she tells him, you know, oh, send me into the world and see what I could do. And Zola was always such a good character because she knew she was damn good and she was damn good. She was a ruthless, cunning, evil, sick of fact. She fully embraced everything, everything the Fire Lord was doing. And you could see that. So when she lost it all at the end and then broke down, that was that was interesting to see. With this, what they've done now, you're pretty much expecting she to crack at any minute. That's it. So yeah, that was pretty much the, the majority of the episode. Now they all have to get prepared for, for war because the fire edition is coming and in the next episode, we kind of know what's going to happen there. But that's what's going on. So that's episode seven. And once again, I must say, it's a disappointment because I was really enjoying what happened with Zhao 
or Jao, whatever you want to call it. At the beginning, I thought that was really some some kind of um, growth for him. No way, that, that, that got cut off. Katara's big fight with this water bending master was very, very unimpressive. And, and I can't, like you say, what, what, what they've done to Katara, that's taken away everything from what she's just so docile and meek. No, it doesn't work. Azula is a terrible character, and everything just keeps running at a pace to make you wonder and constantly winds up on being the avatar. And every avatar he encounters, apart from Avatar, Roku is an asshole. I don't know who they're making this series for, but it's just not coming together the way it's supposed. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. I have a different opinion. I'd love to hear it. If you like, give it a shot, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell. You notified every time I put a new video. And I shall see you all next time. Take care.